about um, CV, crafting a CV. But before then, we know like you craft CV, we submit CV mostly for job applications. But which other one, which other applications do you think a CV is required? But before we dive into that, um, I would like to announce that the, the document and the slide are already in the drive and it's been shared on the Slack channel. You can find them in the broadcast and also in the week one channel. Okay, so aside from job applications, which other applications or which other this thing do you submit our CV for? You can just drop your comments in the, you can drop it in the chat box. So what other thing, aside from job applications, what other thing do you submit your CV for? Which other applications? Okay, proposal to measure competency. Yeah, that's true. You can submit your um, CV even maybe for grant applications, you can submit it for um for graduate school applications and different other things. But for today we're talking about um CV that is suited for job. So our aim here is to craft a good CV that is for job applications. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my slide. Okay. Okay, can you see my slide? All right. All right, thank you. So today we're talking about um, crafting a CV, how you prepare your CV. And because, and this one is for job applications, um, job applications, because at the end of the training, at the end of the day, what we are really looking for is to get a good job. So even after all the trainings we've had, after all the experiences we've had, so how are we going to put it forward to our employer for them to see us? Because when you're applying for a job, you are not the only one applying. There are thousands of applications, depending on the job you're applying for. We have hundreds of people submitting applications for just a role of 10, 10 persons, in some cases, even less than that. So how will you make sure that your own CV stands out? So how will you best sell yourself to the employer? So that's all what we'll be talking about here, because the CV is just like a marketing piece. And that is the first thing the employer will look at. And most times when they are going through the CV, it's not as if they are readily looking at it, reading it word for word. They are just going to skim through it. So how are we going to make our, um, drive our qualities forward so that the employer will know that, okay, well, this is what the person can offer and we are not going to end up selling ourselves short. So here, the CV is like a marketing piece. And then in your CV, we will have different sections where you have your, your educational background, your professional experiences, skills, your accomplishments, your personal information, and all of those things will be included in your CV. And one thing you have to be clear of is like, the CV should present, it should show your value at first glance. So then, how are you going to craft an effective CV? And as we've stated before, when you're applying for a job, we have hundreds of applications. And in most cases, we um, both the humans and even machines are used for, um, for scanning through the CV. So here now we are going to look for a way like when you draft the CV, even when the machine scans it, it will be able to um it will be able to like it will be able to detect some keywords in your CV that are relevant for the role you are applying for. So that is important because if those things are not present in the CV that you that you submitted, then the machine, no matter how qualified you are for the role, the machine will be the first thing they will use to scan the CV. So at least they will reduce the number of um, applicants that way. So even if you are very qualified, but you fail to present yourself well, you fail to include those keywords that are important for the role you're applying to, this machine will definitely scan it out. 
such that when the humans are later reviewing the CV, yours may not even be there. So we, what we are going to do now is going to um, look for a way to prevent such mistakes. And most times, recruiters, what they do is when they are reviewing our CV, it's not as if they're going to be reading it word for word, like I've said before. But they just can't through it, like, OK, well, 10 to 30 seconds, and they are done with the CV. They look for exactly what they are looking for, probably scam them, skim through the skill session, and that's all. And from there, they can determine if, OK, well, this person is what we are looking for. This person does not have the qualities we are looking for. So before I proceed, in case if you have any questions, you can just raise up your hand or you drop it in the chat box. But I prefer if you raise up your hand so that after I've presented, I'll just call you out and then you ask your questions. Okay, so let's move on. So how are we going to um, demonstrate our values? How are we going to show the employers that we have what it takes for the role we are applying for? So here, successful job seekers, you have to understand the unique combination of the experience. That's why once you see a role you want to apply for, you read the description of the job you're applying for. Then those keywords that are necessary, you go through the skills they are looking for, such that when you are writing your own CV, when you are crafting it, you include those qualities in your CV so that it will be something like the um, employers or even the machines that they used to scan it to be like, okay, well, this person has exactly what we are looking for and be able to add value to the company or the organization you're about to join. So now, um, components of a good CV. So in um, a CV, we have different components ranging from your contact information. You have to include your educational background, your work experiences, depending on what you are applying for, your work experiences and your certifications and the likes. So there are some key components that have to be included in your CV. And one of them is your contact information. This contact information has to include your name, your contact information, which will be your email, your phone number. And in the phone number, if you are applying for an international room, you have to include your country code there. Then the address is usually optional. Well, you can just, if you're applying for international as well, you can include just your state and then your country for the address. Then you have to um, supply the link to maybe your portfolio pages, maybe your GitHub, you have a Medium account, or you have your own personal web website. You have to include a link for it. And one, if you're including a link in your CV, it is because, you know, most of those links, they're usually very long. So it is always advisable you look for a way to um, shorten the links or you embed it in the in a text such that in the CV, in the CV once you write your GitHub profile and they are they'll be able to click on the GitHub profile that okay well, this and to take them to the page instead of you supplying the long link there so you have to shorten it so the contact information your name and the name it should be in international format which we have to be your first name first then your middle name, if you have a middle name, you include it. Then your last name. So your first name, middle name, which is optional. If you have it, you can include it. And then your last name. Then after our contact information, what else will you add into a CV? We have the professional summary. And this one is just, we give them an overview of who you are and what you can do, what you've done, and what you can also offer the company. So it will just be like a 50-word brief description of what you can offer, what you've done so far. So this 50-word summary, you should, it, the employer should be able to like, from just this 50-word, they should be able to tell and to understand your career track, what you're interested in, your relevant experiences, just a brief of all of those things. And when you're crafting a CV, it is important that you craft it in a professional manner, and that's why we are having this tutorial, so that it will not come across as, oh, this person is just a student. You don't want to sound like a newbie altogether or a novice. You know, this um, job searching is actually very competitive. So then the next thing is the technical skills. So for this, our skills, the skills you have to include, you, it should align with the role you are applying for. You should align with what you're applying for. That's why it is always important to check the description of the job, 
the skills that is required so that you're able to include them in your CV. So for example, depending on what you're applying for, it could be a project management tool, which will include project planning. Then you can include that, okay, well, I know how to use Trello, Notion, and the likes for planning and scheduling um, projects, as well as um, maybe you know how to use databases, maybe you know how to do data analysis. You include those skills in your CV. So that the um, employ employers will know that, okay, well, if we get this person, if we should employ the person, we don't have to um, start training them all over again for about two weeks before they start giving us value or for two months before we start giving, them, giving us value because most employer, they don't have the time for that. But if you include those skills there, then they'll know that, okay, well, this candidate has what it takes. So it is important that the skills you put, the technical skills, they align with the role you are applying for. Okay, so moving on, we'll have the work experience, which is also really important. Now, when we are talking about work experience, as we said, it's, and you know, this CV and everything is about one to two pages. So you don't have to start writing all the experiences you've had. Probably you were a waiter in secondary school, if it is not relevant to that tool you're applying for. So it has to be relevant to work experience. That's what you will apply and you will supply in the CV. Probably um, you've had volunteering experiences. In case if you do not have maybe paid work and paid work experience, you can add your volunteering position, your internships, or any of those other experiences you've had that is important to the role that will showcase like, okay, well, you've applied some skills that are necessary in performing that role you're applying for. So uh, recruiters are also interested in your achievements. It's not just like you just, um, put the job descriptions there. You have to mention the work you did, the impacts you had on it, maybe the skills you applied to it, and the overall and the overall um, value you added to the company, or maybe the overall value you added, or um, what you achieved in the in that work experience. So here now. You have to mention the results from your work and you have to be very specific such that if you did xyz and now it impacted your team the milestone the company in general you have to put it there then how many clients you you saved and here is always important that you in, um that when you are describing your job rules that you include um values you include data such that it is measurable the impact you have um, you made in the job is measurable. It's not just you just be describing the job descriptions there. You understand what I'm saying? So the next thing we'll talk about is your education. And before we move on to the education, the, on this work experience as well, it has to be in um, reverse chronological orders such that the most recent one comes first, followed by the next and the next. And that's how you arrange the work experience. So now moving on to the education. So moving on to the education, we have, um, you have to include your educational background also in reverse chronological order. So here you include the major you graduated in, say your computer science graduates, the school you graduated from, dates of your graduation. You can add your GPA too if it's strong. But if it is not a very strong GPA, you can exclude it. Then also you can decide to include maybe your award, um, the some maybe your award just briefly or what you've done there under the educational background as well. Then we have the um, license and certifications. So he, this one includes, and it's optional in the CV, but if you have it, you can include it. So it includes um, the certifications, and it's not just, we are not just talking about maybe some online courses you've done, but professional certifications that you've um, in, yeah, you partook in. So here, and when you are listing it, it has to be in form of the full name of the certification, then you include the parenthesis and the abbreviation maybe in parenthesis, the issuing organization, the date that you end that certification, the location, if it's applicable, and every other details that is there. Then, and it should not, it's not the same thing as your honors and your award. Then that one is for another 
um, you can include your honors, your awards in other sections. And then also the projects. So you can include your notable projects can be included where you also talk about them briefly, what you did there. And then you can include a link to the project. And all of this, your project, all what you've done, you can even have a, perhaps you have a website that you have all your portfolio put together. You know, we've already uh, talked about that in your um, contact information. So you put your portfolio link there. But also in this project, it's just for you to be able to speak briefly about your um, the project you did and what you really uh, what was really done in the project, your impact there, your role in that project. So you just talk about it briefly and then you include the link to that particular project you are describing. So now we've talked about what the CV has to include, the different sections that has to be included in our CV. But, and we have some other optional sessions that you can include. So now you know what the CV has to entail. We've known the importance of drafting a good CV, having a very good CV. But it's not just putting the words together. The way you put them is also very important. So that's what we are going to talk about here. The format of your CV is also very important. So you should the um, styles you use, maybe the writing styles, the font style, the size, it should be consistent. And when I mean the size should be consistent, possibly in your name, it could be bold and then maybe the size is larger than the other side. But then each section, for example, when you're talking about your work experience, your volunteering experiences, your honors and your awards, all those headings, if they are bolded, all of them has to be bolded. They should all be in the same font size and they should all be in the same font size and style. So then each bullet point, they should align. So the format of your CV2 is also very important because no, when um, an employer sees a CV that has the skills, or even if you have all the skills, all of those things that they need, but even from the first impression they have about the CV is like this person did not even take the time to really format the CV, did not really take the time to go through the CV and even like put it together in a way that is, um, visually appealing. There's no way the employer really or the person scanning through the CV reviewing it We want to read it because it's not even appealing. So at the end of the day, the CV may just be thrown out. But once the CV and the, um, the format is good, and then what you have there is also very good in terms of your experience, your qualifications, all of those things, then that way you'll be able to stand out from the crowd. So this format too is also very important, just as the content of the CV itself. And most times CVs should be um, about one to two pages at most. We know you have all probably you've had several experiences that you want to include, you want to tell them how incredible you are. And we know you are, but then you have to just limit it to that role you are applying to. So it should be specific to the role. You cannot be applying for the role of say, um, a sales marketer, and then you'll be including some other skills that are not even relevant to that particular or just for it. So your CV should be one to two pages at most. So it will be easy for the employer or the person that is scanning this CV to be easy for them to understand. And then it will not be all jumbled together. They will be able to extract the important information that they require. So now, once you've drafted your CV, and then you have the first draft, you can then check it. Okay, well, does my CV has this? So that's what we are going to talk about now. So we are going to talk about the checklist. So your CV should not have photo, except if the um, if the employer or they, they, they put it there that they sh you should include your photograph, else leave it out. So you should not have a photo, then your name should be consistent with what you have on your CV, your LinkedIn, your GitHub, your website, it should be consistent. And we said before that we should try to format our name in first name, middle name, and last name format. We know in some countries it's like your last name first, then your middle name, your first name. But please, let's change it to the international format, which is the first name, middle name, and then your last name. Then all the links should work. I should click right away. All the links should work. You should, not, you should not include a link that is not even like, is not accessible or something they will have to later have to start requesting for them to access it. No, the link you should include should be something that once they click on it, 
it takes them right to the place they um, we click on it takes them to the right place immediately and then when you are submitting your cv you should try to put it in a pdf format such that because if it is in a word format you know the um what there are different um it could be what 16 10 and different versions so that if it's in a word format if you should submit it probably the version you use to craft the cv is different from the one the person we use to open it at the end of the day you find out your the way you formatted it all the time, time you took in formatting the cv everything will go to waste because at the end of the day you find the cv is all jumbled up together but if it is in a pdf format then to the format will always be retained it will not be scattered here and there then also ensure that the spelling is correct your grammar is correct and then the issues with formatting the consistent with your font size the typing the spacing your paragraphing your bulleting all of those things should be um should be formatted really well and you can ask people to even check your cv out before you submit it you can ask maybe your friends your colleagues your supervisors people that i know that are okay with they to just check the CV for you before you submit it for the role you are applying for. And uh, then your experience, your skills and results are also consistent and they should what they should correlate. Then be clear and concise. The C keep your CV to one towards two pages maximum, two pages maximum. Then no background, then the, um, no logos, all of those other graphics. Because you are not designing um what what's here so it's just to make the cv stand out then use appropriate keyword that match the job posting and that's why i said before before you submit your cv you should have taken the time to read the description of the role you're applying for check the skills they need in that role such that when you are crafting your own cv it has the it has the required skills that they look for and you're able to put it in a way that it will stand out then now uh, let's go and take a look at the challenge documents. But before we do that, let me see if you have any questions, you can raise up your hand or drop it in the chat box. Okay, so um, so um, please, I want to apologize in advance. I may not pronounce your name correctly. So if you um, unmute yourself, you can just correct your name and maybe reintroduce yourself, then ask your question. So, um, Paul C, you can go ahead and ask your question. Hello. Yeah, I, I would like to know if you can use tools like uh, Canvas. To... Okay, like if you can use Canvas to draft your CV. Exactly. I just shared the link. On. Yes, um, you can use it, but one thing you should be sure about is that they should not be too much color. It should be in PDF format. I should um, be well formatted. So if those things are there, you can use Canvas for it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so get there. I'm really sorry, Bob. Please go ahead. Hi, it's Gitere in Jenga. OK, Gitere, OK. Yeah, yeah sure, it's Kenya. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank yeah, so uh I have this issue. Uh okay. like for example, I've I've completed my bachelor's degree. Okay. Then for example, I've uh, enrolled in this uh, AI project management. Okay. Uh, so the part for like edu edu academic qualifications. Okay. Uh, should I always have my bachelor's degree at the top, then these other certifications? down there even if uh, i took these certifications uh, after the degree okay so um with this certification it should be included under the licenses and certifications okay, so it okay. should all, uh, yes it should not be included with your um educational background the educational background is talking about the degrees you've um, undertaken your diplomas all of those things so that's what you can include in your educational background so this okay. one can just include them in your certifications and other courses you took. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. Huh? Yeah, you're welcome. So um who else is raising up their hand? Another question. Okay, go on. Yeah, I typed it uh, on the comment section. 
uh, there is something that you have talked about. Uh, like, for example, if you have a, a long link eh, to your social media platforms, you can use a one word sentence to represent all that. How do we go about that? Uh, Okay, so um, if you have a long link to it, yeah. instead of like shortening it, I'll advise that you um, you embed that link in a text. How? No, okay, now that's so my question. If, let me quickly go just go through it. If it's in on a Word document, okay, let me present the other um, challenge. So I'll use it to just show you how it is done. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so you can see this slide, right? Yeah. Okay, so say for instance now, I want to, I'll just copy a link. I'll copy a link. Let me copy this, um, the link of this uh, meeting. Then I've copied the link. You have the link with you then. Probably you then want to embed it in this project management. Like after you, you hi highlight it, then you can right click. Then you see this insert link. Are you following me? Hello? Yes, we are following. I'm following yes, up. Okay. So then when after you've highlighted it, um, then you right click, you see this insert link, then you click on it, then just include the link and press enter. And that's it. If they should click here, they will be able to go to the link that you are um directing them to. Do you understand this now? Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, so open. Okay, so who is the next person? Alim, Alim Mohim, Mohimin, Ali. Yeah, yeah, Ali. Yeah, okay. thank you, Maya. Uh, my question, my question is: Let's say you are pursuing a degree of which you'll be finishing in, let's say, some few months. Can okay. you include that CV? when you are applying for a job so that it will it will give a clarity that okay you're having a, a yes please include it even say for example if you've completed your bachelor's degree and you're currently pursuing maybe another degree probably your uh, master's degree just include it then in the dates you put from maybe the dates you started then to present so that they understand that okay you are still studying or you can even include it that okay well, this is when you'll be finishing you get but please include it Okay, thank you. All right. So, who is the next person? So, I thought someone raised up their hand down. Is that all the questions we have? So, before I explain the challenge we have to do and the exercise. Okay, fine. Then I will assume I've answered. All right. Okay. So I will assume I've answered the questions you have for now. So I'll go on and um, talk about the careers challenge that you have and how you go about um, the submission, the deadline, and all of those things. Okay. So having talked about what our CV needs to include, what's needed in the CV. So now I have to. Um, so here I'll be talking about the what you have to submit for these steps. And I hope all of us have access to these documents now because it has been posted on the Slack channel, in the broadcast and even in the week one um, sub channel. So here, the introduction is just what we stated before, that this market is competitive. So how you craft your CV is very important because that's what will distinguish you from other applicants and make you stand out and here is just um talking about what needs to be included in the cv which is your name and all of those things are your personal contacts your contact information so your name and it we said it should be first name first the middle name and last name and then the way you write it it should be what um the capital letter like the the first letter should be capitalized such for example the Trevor Noir, not radio putting everything in capital letter or then putting one in capital letter, then the other one in having small letters. Then you should include your contact information as well and your LinkedIn, your portfolio link, your experiences. So then you should have your experience. 
And here it talks about um, how you should craft your experience. And as I've stated before, your experience, you should not just um, include your job description there. So what you should do is you should talk about the impacts you made, the role you performed in that um, in that um, experience, what you really did there. So here, there's a link to a box law. You, when you have the time, you can look at it. So it's just talking about how um, you have to craft um, your experience, how you should write it. So it's just explaining more about it. So you can just open it up on your own. Or should I? OK, let's go. Then if we still have the time, I can come back and open up the link. So but it's self-explanatory. So then we have our education. You should include your educational background. And as we stated before, it should be in reverse chronological order. Then in some cases, I have how to put this like, but in some cases, depending on the goal you are applying to, so you can have under your um, educational background, you can put have just a little subhead in there, like relevant courses. Then you list some courses you took, probably your undergraduate the, um, degree, your master's degree, your PhD, some other courses that you took, then you can include them that are relevant to the role you are applying to. Then also there you can include maybe any award you took, the organizations you joined, just briefly there. So that you'll know that, okay, when you went for your um, undergraduate schooling, it was not just um, the book, book, book. You had other experiences too. If they are really relevant or if they are impressive, you can include it. Then your, C, your GPA, you can include it if it's a very strong GPA. But if it is not very strong, just leave it out. Then if, for example, if you want to include your CGPA, you can include it as 3.27 over 4. Or you can even go further to add context that you are among the top 20% of your class, or you are among the 10% or the top 1% of your class, depending on what it is that you are just to impress the employer. Then moving on, you have our license and certifications we've already talked about. And it should also be in reverse chronological order. Then we have our skills. Then these sections, they will allow the recruiters to just skim through your CV to check if you have the things that are important. And one thing you should note is the skill section is also very, very important. So that's why any job you want to apply for, any role you are applying for, always take the time to read what is required such that you're able to craft your CV to align with it. So the skill section too is also very important. Then for this challenge, what you are expected, um, so for this task, you are expected to understand the purpose of a CV, which we've done. We know that it is for us to stand out in whatever we are applying for so that we will get the job or what it is we are applying for. But in this case, job, since we are crafting a CV for a job, then the understand the role a CV plays in helping you to improve your employability and your employment. And also, you should be able to craft an error-free CV that is well formatted, grammatically correct as well. So in case if you need any questions or after the sessions, you have any questions, you can drop it on the Slack channel and you can tag me as well. Then these are the key dates for um, the submission. So the session is already um, taking place. Then for the submission is on Saturday by 8 p.m. UTC. So you can convert that, that to your local time zone. So, but it's on Saturday, but you don't have to wait till Saturday before you submit, but that is the deadline. So what do you have to submit? This is, so you review your current CV. It's safe to assume like that we have a CV or even if you don't have, you can, from what you've talked about today, you can craft one. So once you've had the draft, then you check it with this. So in the face of the work, you have to review your CV and then you check if it has for your contact information, it should include your country, your phone number should include your country code. It should include your email address, your LinkedIn, all of those links that we've talked about. Then ensure that your name is correctly formatted. Then there is consistent as well. And then your work experience 
um, the your work experience, your educational background, they should be in reverse chronological order. Then you should prefer the documents. You should have no um, grammatical errors. Then you should go. You should also be consistent, like with the formatting. Avoid too much colors and all of those things. Then, after you've done all of this, you save it in a PDF format. And when you are saving your CV, it should be your first name, last name, CV. Like when you want to name it, first name, last name, CV. For example, now for my own name, I can include it as Mariam Adeyemo CV. Like when you want to submit. So they're able to know okay this cv belongs to so so and so person then you should have a um, link to your online portfolio we've talked about all of those things so improve your current cv we have added a link to cv templates just in case if you need that you can go through it to have a template for the cv then ensure you have a brief summary of your profile and your for and your desired do so for this particular submission, for this particular submission, you don't have to include your brief, um, your profile, the brief summary of your profile, but it is optional. It is optional. Though if you are applying for jobs, please is encouraged to include it. But for this submission, you don't have to include it. It is optional, but it is encouraged. Then ensure that you have a full list of most of your skills. I should aim for about 10 skills. I'm sure if you take the time to rack our brain and think about it, you'll be able to come up with about eight to 10 skills or thereabouts. So, and this CV now, you know, you are not applying for a particular job, but since we are talking about project management, if you can rack your head around that. But since you are not talking about a particular job, then this, I'm just talking about for this skill section. So you don't have to limit yourself. So the skills you include, include the skills you have. So sorry that this particular CV can be like your central CV that you can be using to be editing others. But then again, it should be about one to two pages to get. So um, limit yourself to skills that are most relevant to your career path. Then consider how best to make it easy for your employer to skim through. Then ensure your skills, your educational background are all in reverse chronological order and follow the box two, which is simply describing your job experience in a way that you highlight the impacts you made and it should be measurable. So ensure you list your education in reverse chronological order. We've talked about that as well. So now, the deadline is on saturday and this is the late policy you can go through all of this so submissions that are submitted before the deadline you receive a 20 percent bonus grade which will be leading to um go towards your leaderboard ranking is encouraged to submit early then submissions that are between one minute 24 hours okay so if you submit about one day to the deadline, so you submit on Friday or on Saturday morning and all of those things. There's no penalty. So, and submissions which are more than 24 hours, that is um, late submissions, they will have their work auto-graded, but the grade does not count towards the leaderboard. So it's actually no submit. But we'll grade it for you, Will, but it will not come towards the, it will not count towards the leaderboard. So it's better you submit early, at worst submit on Saturday, but try to avoid submitting late after the deadline, which is 8 p.m. on Saturday. And the 8 p.m. is UTC. So you convert that to your local time zone. And I think people in Nigeria, that will be 9. People in Kenya, that should be 10. But you can confirm that. So anyways, then this is the full policy if you want to go through it and then the tutorials, question and feedback, you have a grade. And then that is it. Then the marking rubrics. Once you've done your, um, you've written your CV, you've formatted it very well, you've, you've saved it, you've written your name clearly, then you can go through this just to know how your CV will be graded. And that is that about that. An individual feedback will not be given. So, so that is that about this tutorial. 
So now, um, if you have any questions, you can raise up your hand. Okay, so Felicia, you go on. Right. So, um, I just want to ask if for this particular one, are we like tailoring it to project management? Are we like tailoring this um, particular CV? No, you, you don't. No, don't tailor. You don't have to tailor it to project management. But you have to tailor it to probably you have a your career goal. You can maybe everybody have their individual career goal. So you tailor it to that. But use the format that we've talked about here. No. Okay, okay. For for example, if we are okay, if I'm yeah. a link, another question now. If I'm adding a link to the projects I've done, like my portfolio, and I want to add yeah. all these um, projects that I'll be doing in okay. this, um, like, how how will it be when we're presenting that kind of thing? How will it be in that portfolio? I don't understand the question. Please come again. Okay. For example, the challenges we have been given in this program. Okay. The project so if i'm going to add like a link to say okay on my cv to link them to this project i don't know how to like display it on that wow. on the cv how to, yeah how do i display it? okay for example okay let's say i'm putting on a link to say okay this link should lead you to the portfolio of the work out of like, what i'm doing i'm okay. trying to add the, thing, the assignment to doing on this course on this program so like Okay. okay, so um, I'm not really sure I understand the question, but I'll go ahead and answer it then. You tell me if that's what you're asking. So now, for example, I'll open up another document, which is the CV template. Okay, so you can see the CV template, right? Okay. So now this CV templates in your, um, from all this, your link, you see here now we have our phone number, the email, your medium link, GitHub, LinkedIn. Then here too, you can put your website, your portfolio link and all of those things. So you can add them here. And just as I explained earlier, if, you are, if the question you're asking is, how can you add a link to um, the CV? For example, when we have it here, when you have it here and you say you want to add maybe your GitHub link here. So once you've highlighted the GitHub link, link you've written it, then you highlighted it, just right click. I cannot edit that document, that's why. Let me share this tab instead. Okay, so say this is the GitHub link. link. So you, you highlight it, you right click, then you click on insert link. Then you copy your GitHub link and then you paste it here and enter apply. So that is it. So did I answer your question correctly? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, who else has a question? Any other questions? Hello. Okay. Uh, there's this thing that I've been doing with my CV, so I'm not sure if it's right. Okay. Uh, for example, because I have these certifications, maybe my degree and maybe other vocational courses that I've taken. Okay. So when I prepare my CV, I usually go to the PDF combiner, then I combine my CV and uh, those certifications. Eh? So they come out as one good document. Eh? Is that right or wrong? Okay. So um. The thing is, the certifications we include, you know, this series about it should be one to two pages. So everything you are including, it should be tailored to the role you are applying for. If you have certifications in something that is not important to the role you are applying for, you don't have to include it. Okay. Yeah. So, but if the certifications, if they are important, then you include them. But okay, always okay. try to form, uh, format it to about one to two pages, two pages maximum, because they don't have the time to be reading like three pages. They are not the only candidates there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So, um, any other questions?
Okay, so we don't have any questions. All right. So um, that is that for this session. If you have any questions, you can um, check the Slack channel. And for people that mix, miss the um, tutorial, it will be uploaded on the YouTube channel as well. If you have questions, post it on the Slack channel. The, um, the link to the documents are there. And please endeavor to submit your assignment early. At most, submit it by the deadline. But avoid submitting it because it will just be upgraded, but it will not come towards your leaderboard. And with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and have a wonderful and productive day. See you next time. Bye.